If you're watching this video, you probably work in tech or maybe follow tech closely as a consumer or professional in an adjacent industry. And in that case, you probably heard the term FANG thrown around as an acronym that captures the best and most prestigious tech companies of the time. If you don't work in tech though, the term could sound maybe a bit silly or even odd in its sometimes cult-like or glorifying usage. But on the surface, FANG is a simple word. It stands for Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Five of the premier tech companies in the world. And maybe that's all there is to it and there's nothing else more to say in this video. But I think there is something worth unpacking in the language we use around tech and business. Call it over analysis, but I think if you unpack it further, there's a lot of baggage and societal implications wrapped up in what is otherwise just a straightforward acronym. So in this video, I wanna talk about just how FANG came to be and why it's comprised of these specific companies versus the myriad of other giant tech companies that maybe are just as big, if not bigger than the FANG companies. And maybe most interestingly, we'll chat about what FANG might be replaced with soon. The backdrop for this whole discussion is that the AI-driven tech boom we're currently undergoing will likely bring a new stock of tech companies leading the world, thereby earning a place in the tech's premier acronym. But before we get there, let's quickly visit just how FANG came to be and why tech even deserves such a distinction in the first place. To start, let's put tech in context with other industries. Technology globally is practically the biggest industry, followed by others like energy, consumer products, and financial services. And these are the companies that are shaping the world, making the biggest monetary impact, serving the largest number of people. And I don't mean that in some hail corporate sense, just that these companies objectively drive a ton of money and have some sort of massive objective impact, whether good or bad. Drill further, and you'll find various acronyms and terms to describe the top players in any field. Take accounting, for example. The biggest accounting firms are referred to as the big four. In the auto industry, there's historically been the big three of GM, Ford, and Chrysler. And in consulting, there's the big five consulting companies. The list goes on and on of industries anointing their biggest companies with some sort of moniker or acronym. Now, FANG is basically the big five of tech, but it's not the literal five biggest companies on market cap. Rather, I think it's inspired by the companies that basically defined the Web 2.0 slash mobile era of tech. Basically, through the 2010s, tech saw a significant change in platform with the smartphone. Traditional website search and advertising continued to be key businesses, but mobile was now the prevailing platform. And with the new platform came new modes and distribution channels for social networking, shopping, entertainment, and more, all areas that would be significantly disrupted by tech. And so, what companies dominated these areas? On the mobile platform side, Google snatched a giant foothold on mobile platforms with Android and its continued lucrative search and ads business. Apple took the other half of the mobile pie with pioneering iPhone, iPod, and Mac hardware. Then Facebook, despite not being able to capture a hardware platform, became the dominant social platform and ads platform through its related properties like Instagram and WhatsApp. And Netflix, with its video streaming dominance and rapidly growing subscriber base, grew enormously as practically the only large streaming company at the time. And lastly, with commerce, Amazon scaled to be the top mover of goods online, as well as a key infrastructure company with AWS. All of these goods and services obviously generated massive amounts of wealth and market cap, and each of these companies represented some of the largest and most successful tech companies of their time. So when it comes time to identify the top tech companies, total market capitalization is a key but incomplete criterion. Clearly, there's something else at play here, because what about non-fang companies that still boast giant market caps? Companies like Microsoft, Tesla, TSMC, AMD, Salesforce, for example, they're all tech giants, so why did they earn fang distinction at the time? Well, there's some element of prestige, coolness, culture, and impact that I think affects the equation. For example, Salesforce might be a giant company, but B2B software just isn't as cool or sexy from a journalistic or consumer standpoint. Not to pick on Salesforce, it's a great company, but there are a ton of great tech businesses that make a ton of money that will never really enter the public consciousness or any cultural conversation at scale. On the other hand though, consumer targeted companies like the aforementioned fan companies are super relevant to the average Western citizen on top of having a giant market cap. It's also worth mentioning the perspective from the inside, from people working in tech, which I think corroborates this to some extent. Take the app Blind, for example. It's kind of like Glassdoor, basically an anonymous forum where tech workers congregate to gossip and discuss individual companies, the, their working conditions, and tech news. It's certainly a partial and skewed representation of people in tech, but some things do ring true. The conversations there are often so hyper fixated on salary and benefits and just how someone can optimize their career path to get the best compensation at the best tech companies. Now, I'm not an engineer, but after going to school here and working in the Bay Area for a while, I can honestly say that there is this materialistic obsession from the inside of the fan companies. Maybe that's a topic for another video. But my point is, 
If you work at one of these companies, you've kind of made it. So tech employees, by choosing where to work amongst these tech companies, are indirectly rating and defining the companies that earn fame status. Clearly, there's a high demand to work at Facebook, Apple, Amazon, etc. Anyways, my point is that there's more than just company evaluation that undergirds these conversations. Now, getting back on topic, Fang is largely a 2010s to early 2020s phenomena. We're now in a moment where Mang might be the new acronym as a direct result of the AI boom. And look, if you ask five different people in tech to come up with an acronym for the top tech companies, you might get five different answers. So I'm not trying to predict or define now what the current top dogs are, but more so just float some ideas and rationale here and a comment on this transition from Fang to Mang. To start, we have to change the F to an M because Facebook is meta. But also, we have to keep it in there because meta, coming off its latest market rip, is clearly a serious player in AI, social, AR, VR, basically most of the key trends right now. Apple, Amazon, and Google, of course, are still as dominant as ever, so they probably deserve to be in there. Google, though, within tech, has started to lose some luster. You'll hear a lot of murmurs about how the culture of the company has maybe deteriorated a bit from its earlier startup-like form. But nonetheless, I don't think anyone expects Google to fade away anytime soon. Now, what about Netflix? It's been super challenging for streaming because of all the competition in this space. I talked about this in a previous video, about the unbundling and rebundling of tech, and how Netflix has had a massive challenge in retaining its catalog amidst competitors like Disney Plus and Amazon Prime, picking away at its customer base. It's still a quality company with room to grow, but right now the conversation in tech is all about AI. Of all the tech companies poised to benefit from AI, I don't think Netflix tops that list. It's just not really a core piece of their business, being a content business. NVIDIA, on the other hand, is clearly benefiting from this wave. Its market cap exploded to over 1.5 trillion and could potentially be a rare hardware entrant to the main acronym. The nuance here, calling back to our discussion of tech workers, is that in the internal conversations about tech companies and where engineers want to work, historically, NVIDIA just hasn't had nearly as much popularity or traditional software engineering design or product managerial roles in the way that consumer-first companies do. So for that reason, I could see people bucketing NVIDIA maybe somewhere else, despite its clear tech dominance being the hardware company AI is being built on. Lastly, we now have to kind of count Microsoft in. In the late 2010s, it kind of languished as an uninspired old school dot-com company, but with OpenAI and its slew of AI investments, it's had this second win where it's starting to become, call it cool again. I think that in the next one to two years, we'll really start to see who the top companies are going into the late 2020s and 2030s. There are plenty of individual AI startups like Anthropic or Perplexity that potentially have a shot at outgrowing legacy tech companies. Clearly, it's not that AI is going to pass companies from the FANG era completely by, but we'll just have to see how things shake out. So with all that said, we'll wrap this video up and continue to keep an eye on the biggest trends in tech and business. Ultimately, FANG, MANG, MANGA, all these various acronyms, they're just an expression of the culture of the moment, of the trends of the moment, and this, the current snapshot of how tech is evolving. It's not so much that these words carry weight, but it's more so how we use them and what we mean by them. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll move on to the next one.